Hello, Gloria. Thank you so much for joining the internal communication series that I run on my blog. I've been talking to thought leaders on specific topics related to internal communications, and I, I know that you have uh, you know, been an expert around the communication planning space, so I'm quite interested and intrigued to you know, hear your thoughts. So before we get started, it will be great if you could quickly introduce yourself for our viewers. Okay, hi. It's uh, very nice to join you today. Um, I'm based in London, but obviously uh, American. Um, I've worked in a number of different industries and countries around the world. Uh, right now, I do some consulting work and also spend quite a bit of time in academia uh, mm -hmm. with undergraduate and graduate students. So it's uh, an opportunity to pass things along. Great. So let me begin uh, with the first question as to what is your understanding or how important is communication planning to organization? Because there's been surveys which say that not much time is given inside organization. They don't invest enough to plan their activities. And why do you think organizations plan less often? Well, in my experience, um, planning is something we talk about a lot, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure how much time we actually spend either training people in terms of how to do planning mm. or talking about the importance of planning. Um, right. in, in most of the roles that I have had, for me, planning is the first thing that you do. Mm. And that means that you really get to have a good understanding of the organization you're working for, whether you are in an in-house role or consulting. And I've worked in both. And I think it's very important um, even to have that initial conversation with, right. you know, what is it the business is trying to accomplish? What are the business's goals? Because right. everything we do in communication has to track back to that. And right. if we aren't connected to the business mm. plan and the business mm. objective, then right. we're doing a lot of nice things, but they may not have the impact that they should. Fantastic. That's that's a great great call out, and you know what? According to you, are some of the key components or you know elements of a great communication plan? Well, I think we have to look at planning as a whole, whether it's for communication or marketing or operations or anything else. And mm. for me, the first part is understanding the situation that we're in. What's mm. our market? Who do we sit in that market? Who mm. are our competitors? Um, what what are our objectives as a business? Right. Right. So I think once we understand hmm. the situation, hmm. then we have an opportunity to begin to develop how can we use communication hmm. to help the business achieve its objectives. So it has to be very much connected. And I think this has been a problem for communicators for a long time. Uh, we're kind of expected to go in and do a lot of things. Hmm. But we don't spend any time to say, wait a minute, are we doing the right thing? Mm. As to just doing it. So, for me, planning is, um, in any organization, is something that occupies a lot of management time. Mm. And I think it's what to be seen as making an impact mm. in that organization. And right. we have to practice some of the same. Um, activities that mm. all those other people are sitting around in the seat. Mm. Got it. And, you know, there is this thinking that communication plans are mostly very tactical in nature. So how do, how do you make it strategic? I mean, what 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 goes into well, making up strategic? And, and I think you've raised a good point. There are obviously two types of planning, strategic planning and tactical planning. Mm. And tactical planning is, in some ways, you know, it, it's a lot easier because we have a huge variety of things we can do. Um, mm. In the current communication environment, I mean, how mm. many tools can you think of? How many channels can you right. think of? Right. And there are new ones every year. And mm. audiences you know, move from this one to that one, and here comes something else. And it's very easy to get sort of swept up in mm. the, oh, here's a new one, let's try that. But it may not get our messages to the people that need to speak. So to me, the, the strategic plan is what provides context mm. for all the tactical work that we do. So mm. for me, it's not about, you know, it's kind of a, a glib statement, but it's not about doing things right. It's doing the right thing. 
that's mm. the right time. So the link between tactical planning and strategic planning is tactical planning. Mm. Got it. Great. And, you know, so with so much of change happening in our world and inside organizations, mm. you know, there is an expectation that communicators need to be adaptive and flexible. So how much of flexibility can you build into a communication plan and what was the expectation? Well, you know, plans, plans are plans and plans <laughs> can change. Right. Um, and I think what we've seen, especially over the last year or so, are businesses that had a very clear strategic plan mm. and were able to adapt to a circumstance, adapt to mm -hmm. a changing environment. Uh, right. The impact we've seen in um, online shopping, right? Uh, the development and, and the wide acceptance of electric cars. These are mm. not new concepts. The businesses right. involved in this have been involved for a very long time. Mm. They were asked enough that they could take advantage of the right. situation. So I think we have to look at our planning the same way. Um, a business plan generally is, you know, at minimum five years, if not ten. Right. Um, yeah. A market plan is probably three to five years. Hmm. Our communication plans on the tactical side are probably a year, maybe three. Mm -hmm. it depends. Mm -hmm. um, it's the tactical plans that we can change quite easily. Mm -hmm. But our plans won't change that. Right. Got it. And, you know, <clears throat> there is this <clears throat> thinking that, uh, you know, too much planning leads to paralysis. And, you know, there are times when uh, we only plan and we don't execute the plan. So how, how do you get people to, or communicators to think about moving from a plan to action? Well, for me, I think, you know, planning is action. Mm. It's making sure that we're taking the right action. Right. The most effective actions for the targets that we have set. So, um, if we are doing our planning well, we are regularly monitoring that plan. Hmm. Are we on track to achieve what we've set out, whether it's an outcome or an output? Are we getting the results that we want? If not, then we need to understand why we aren't and make that adjustment. Hmm. Um, so I don't see you know, planning and implementation as necessarily disconnected activities. Right. Because our monitoring allows us to review what's happening and then make the changes that we need to as the campaigns or our particular programs roll out. Got it, got it. Uh, and in your, uh, you know, in your journey as a consultant, as academician, you know, is there some example of an organization which has succeeded by communicating or planning well? Um, I think, I mean, I, I can think of lots of examples. Um, if you, as I do, evaluate um, entries in different communications programs, uh, we will see evidence of you know, organizations and communications teams that have done their planning so that mm. the execution is effective. Um, right. In my own experience, um, I've you know, used planning to work through what should we be doing, particularly around change programs. Mm. I think um, then you know, planning is really important. The other benefit of doing um, your planning well is that you have integrated your activities with activities of other functions within the organization. Right. And we cannot operate in a silo. Right. Because right. what we do affects the whole organization, not just Absolutely. communication. Um, in some of the businesses that I've worked in and, and consulted with, safety 